Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, like I said, the next sections will follow shortly and I'm pretty sure some of you are surprised by the pace at which these videos are coming out. But I, like I said, I promised to have them ready for you before the major exams and that is exactly what I'm doing. So this is exercise 8.3 or what you might call chapter 8.3 in the workbook and these are the solutions. So I started off with giving you a picture of the heart and I said to label the different parts. If you did not get all the labels, that's absolutely fine. The point of this exercise was to basically get you comfortable with um, the different parts of the heart, basically, um, just to ensure that you understood exactly what it is that you were doing and um, how, like how it worked uh, or what parts you would need to know about. And um, I mean, I'm looking at this now and I'm wondering if these labels are actually like 100% accurate because again, I am recording this at like, it's now like 6.15 a.m. So, um, and I just answered the questions like right now now. So hopefully these are correct, but um, please check that to make sure that you have the right thing. The most important parts for you to know are the atrium, which are the right atrium and the left atrium. Um, which are at the top and the ventricles which are at the bottom you should also know this line separating them or this muscle separating them is the septum you should know that this big round thing here is the aorta right and you should also know the pulmonary veins um, well not necessarily the veins you should know the different valves so the tricuspid valve and the um, aortic valve those are valves that you should know the pulmonary valve um, those are valves that are important for you to know all right and if you know those you should be fine um you should definitely know about the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins but that's if you are being asked about how blood is oxygenated but there's a better explanation on the channel if you just go to playlist and you click on chapter eight um you will see all the videos there so two key things that i know students struggle with if you notice in this part of the workbook i didn't give you questions like oh what does the pulmonary valve do and what does the atria do and things like that because students often miss out on the key aspects which are like the functions of the sinoatrial node that is the san and the atrioventricular node which is the avn so the san is something that generates electric impulses that sets the pace for the heart so it basically sets what you call the excitation wave and it's very important because if it is out of whack which basically means if it doesn't function properly then the heart will not beat in a regular pattern and that can create problems for the person so it is always important for the senior atrial node to work um, excellently then you have the atrioventricular node and what the atrioventricular node does is that it takes that excitation wave that's the electric impulse that's generated by the SAN and it spreads it across the atria. So the SAN starts in the right atria, that is where it works, um, but the AVN will take that impulse and spread it across the atria and then pass it through what we call the porcine tissues through the ventricles. Those are the functions of those two and those are very, very, very important. Also important for you to remember, and I've just thought about this now, that whenever you are looking at a picture of the heart in your exam, please note that you're looking at a mirror image. So your right is going to be the left of the diagram and your left is going to be the right. The other way to tell if you're looking at the right side of your heart or the left side is to make sure that the part that has the thickest, the thicker muscle on the side is the left side and the reason for that is the left side carries oxygenated blood and that blood is pushed out at high pressure um, and so that part has a thicker cell wall uh, well a thicker muscle than you would find on the right side okay so just bear that in mind okay then stages of the cardiac cycle so you know that in the cardiac cycle there are at least there are about three stages or if you want to expand it five stages but there are three key stages and that starts with an atrial systole always remember that a systole means a contraction and a diastole means a relaxation so atrial systole means that the heart will contract or the atria rather will contract and they will push blood down into the ventricles because remember the atria are at the top and then after 0 0.1 seconds which obviously is super short the itch, the ventricular systole will begin, which means the ventricles will contract and then push the blood. 
Um, when the ventricles contract at first, it's about closing the valves between the atria and the ventricles. Um, and then after that has happened, then the ventricular systole will push the blood into the aorta and the pulmonary artery because this is about carrying blood away from the heart. Okay. Once they push that blood, the semilunar valves will open. Um, and once the blood is in, the semilunar valves will close and the ventricles relax, which is called the ventricular diastole. The pressure in the ventricles will drop. The blood will again flow into the atria from the lungs and the whole process will repeat itself. Then I asked you a question about this, which was like what the PQRST um, waves in the electrocardiogram represent. And this again is just to have you thinking about like how they correlate with the cardiac cycle, not necessarily because I was trying to catch you out. So the P wave is like where the atria is depolarized. So when we say it's depolarized, it means that... Um, it has like a membrane potential that's less than um, its actual membrane potential. If you've done um, chapter 15 with me, I'm sure you remember this. And it's basically like the generation of an electrical impulse. So that causes it to contract. And once that contraction happens, you will then have the QRS um, wave, which is where the ventricles themselves contract. And the ventricles contract, like they don't necessarily contract twice, uh, but there's like a small excitation that happens. So you can notice here, if you're looking at the waves, that the atrial um, systole is not that is not a big contraction per se. The big contraction is like with the first ventricular systole, and then there's a little excitation afterwards, which is what we call the repolarization of the ventricles, and is the late ventricular systole. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this section. Chapter nine will follow shortly.